Well, let's return now to our top story and the downing of the Malaysian Airlines plane over eastern Ukraine. We're going to cross live to Stanford in California and speak to Arash Aramesh. He's a national security uh, analyst at California Stanford University. Nice to speak to you. See you there, um, Arash. Um, a bit of a fallout, lots of tension building up politically since MH17 came down. Yeah, uh, President Putin and his actions since the invasion of the Crimean Peninsula and then uh, funding, supporting, training uh, the uh, armed rebels in eastern Ukraine, it's pretty much gone without much of a consequence. Consequence, I'm sorry. Uh, the only real consequence here has been a pretty uh, tough American and European sanctions, but that's it. It doesn't seem as if uh, Mr. Putin has learned his lesson or the uh, Russian military has learned its lesson. Uh, the fallout is going to be grave. The Germans, they're huge Russia, uh, trade partners with Russia. They are very upset about this. The Dutch, they lost many citizens. They carry plenty of weight in the European Union. And the world community is outraged by the fact that 295 innocent civilians were shot down out of the sky, literally, and they're, they're all dead. So there is going to be a fallout. There's going to be more pressure on Putin. And that is exactly what should have been done six months ago, eight months ago, when people, myself included, were screaming that Putin understands force and Putin understands pressure. Uh, you, we had to organize the world six, seven, eight months ago when this thing was about to happen, when Putin was intervening and interfering directly in, in the popular uprising in Kiev, and then later on supporting elements to take over uh, the, the, the Crimean Peninsula and then eastern Ukraine. Uh, without consequences, his actions are going uh, are, are to go on and continue. Um, Arash, yes, consequences and sanctions, but sanctions will mean very little to the families that lost family members, friends on that plane. Just how far can all these world leaders who are saying that they are furious, it's an outrage, just how far diplomatically can they go? Well, there will be a lawsuit. Unfortunately, nothing, nothing is going to uh, bring back to life these uh, loved ones. And nothing is going to uh, uh, ease or heal the wounds of these suffering families. But there will be a lawsuit. Uh, most likely, the receiving end of that lawsuit is going to be the Russian government for supplying these uh, uh, Buk uh, SA-11 missiles, or we never know, maybe they were actually launched from, from Russian territory. But uh, there will be a lawsuit. Uh, highly likely, uh, this lawsuit will be somewhere in Europe. It could actually be in a, in a, in a U.S. court. We don't know how they're going to choose forum, but there will be a lawsuit and plenty of damages sought from the Russian Federation. In terms of diplomatic pressure, uh, this is a conflict that has been going on now. It's been simmering for about uh, six months. It's no longer a low-intensity conflict. There is parts. There are parts of Ukraine that are completely out of government control. There has to be one, gov one country, one government, one sovereign. And this is clearly not happening. You saw earlier in uh, Sky News that uh, uh, the European officials could not even reach uh, the, the crash site. And when they got there, they were heavily monitored by these rebels. Second quick point is this, SA-11 or Buk uh, surface-to-air missiles are in wide use around the world. A lot of rogue regimes, including uh, the, the government of North Korea, the Syrian government, they have multiple batteries using these Buk missiles. What would happen in case the radical terrorist group ISIS or the Islamic State were to take over one of these Buk facilities in Syria? Is it not plausible to think they would use it against American or European airliners? I doubt not. Arash, we're hearing that parts of the plane are being moved. They've actually been taken away. The bodies have been treated disgracefully, um, as we've heard from the uh, Dutch Prime Minister. Do you think, following international outrage, Mr Putin is likely to start um, distancing himself from the separatists? Because he's not really one to back down, is he? No, he's not. And he's playing a PR game. He's definitely playing uh, the, to his domestic audience, the Russian nationalist audience that loves to see this strong leader standing up against America, standing up to the West. But what he's really doing is really actually hurting Russian interests and he's really hurting Russian businesses. What Mr. Putin has also lost control of are some of these radical groups. You know, the uh, the Russian, the, the sort of Ukrainian uh, rebels, the Ukrainian insurgency 
is not a unified one faction, one group sort of organization. There are multiple factions, multiple groups, some of which are very radical. And it's clear that Mr. Putin has and, and his allies in the Kremlin and in the Duma have lost control over some of these guys. If you remember about a month and a half, two months ago, when the Ukrainians were holding their presidential elections, Mr. Putin told the rebels not to intervene, not to interfere and be nice. They didn't listen to him. So his nightmare scenario is A, losing control over, over the rebels, and B, the rebels doing things just like this, shooting down airplanes, for which Mr. Putin and the Russian Federation are going to be blamed for. Very quickly, Arash, have you heard any murmurings from the international Russian community, uh, say in America also, um, anything picked up on social media or within the intellectual community? Well, there is definitely a great deal of grieving and a great deal of mourning about, uh, you know, uh, and, and a great deal of sympathy for the families of the victims. Uh, uh, you know, Russian friends or non-Russian friends or American friends or non-American friends, everybody is very sad and sorry about what's happened. Uh, the question is, how can we address this politically without getting into a wider conflict? And how can we bring Mr. Putin, who hates to be cornered, but he's going to be cornered and he's going to be cornered more than he's cornered right now. But how can we bring someone like Putin to the negotiating table and how can we tell him not to support radical elements in Ukraine and respect Ukrainian sovereignty? Okay, Russia, very difficult to respect a man mixed in with all this. Thank you very much.